Oh, yeah, stand by, stand by, stand by, guys. A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. It promises to be exciting as always. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Thanks once again for joining us on the show tonight. Uh, we start off the show tonight with something that caught us on our wares. A lot of us were rejoicing the moment we heard that Nigeria will host the Athletics Championship, but came to us as a rude shock today when it was announced that uh, for... Uh, COVID-19 related reasons, Nigeria will not be hosting that athletics event anymore. We'll talk more on that as we pr move on on uh, the show t tonight. Also, also, we'll be talking about the Olympics, 50 days ago. We'll talk about the Olympics. We'll talk about what is happening right there in Tokyo. We'll also take a look at the European Championships, spend uh, a little time to talk about the French Open, and also the big one tomorrow, the Super Eagles of Nigeria and the indomitable alliance of Cameroon uh, will lock horns uh, in um, a friendly, and we'll see what happens in that one. So that's the outlook of the show tonight. Before I introduce my uh, partners to you, I have a couple uh, tonight. Uh, I have, uh, you know, like three of them waiting in the weeks, and I also have a special guest that you would love to listen to. But first, let me bring you into all that we're doing. I'm giving you a quick rundown. So this is how you can be a part of the show tonight. You can send us a mail, you can drop your comments on Facebook, and you can also uh, get across to us on Twitter by tweeting at us that handle that you have on your screen. Very active. Let us know how you feel about all the things that I have talked about. Our channels underscore sports is where you should drop your comments and uh, tweet at us. That's it. Send us a mail. Source at channelstv.com. Get across to us on Facebook channels, iPhone sports. So that's how you can be a part of the show. Let's move on quickly. We have a lot of ground to cover on the show tonight. Let me introduce my partners on the show. Uh, seated right next to me, Bolu Omoni. He joins me again this Thursday evening. Bolu, Christmas to you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, good to be here again. Like you rightly said in the intro, the, well, should I say bad news of the athletics? We were all excited as I went there. Uh, it was coming, but again, you, you consider the reasons. I don't think, uh, maybe there's still time for the consideration, but they've said no. No, it's no. They will definitely have their positive. They probably have looked at the ups and downs and feel, well, mm -hmm. we have to, but we have to support them. We have to agree. There's really nothing we can do. And again, the big game tomorrow, it's always something to talk about. There will always be some no's to talk about, and obviously, there will also be some yes to pick out from the game tomorrow. All right. King Philadelphia as well uh, makes a return on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me once again today. Um, you know, like um, Bolo have said, you know, turning down um, the hosting of um, the ethic competition. Um, given the times we're in right now, a lot of um, countries are a bit skeptical when it comes to mm -hmm. hosting events and all. And so um, for Nigeria to turn it down, you know, at the, um, the time that they did, I don't think um, it's out of place. You know, it just goes to, um, to show that um, for these times, we have to be very careful as to um, what we're taking and what we're not taking. And also, the game coming up tomorrow, Nigeria Cameroon, always a big game, anytime, any day. So I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. All right. You're not alone. A lot of people <laughs> are doing that as well. Looking forward to that game, of course, eight Nations Cup titles between those two countries. Cameroon with five, Nigeria with three. Three of the five, Cameroon won. They won defeating the Super Eagles. And for some of us, when we remember that, we're not always uh, very happy. But guys, let's start with the athletic story where we'll wait for our guests to join us on the show. You have given your reasons and a lot of people will agree with you. But there are some that also do not agree. You knew there was COVID. Mm -hmm. Why, why did you say the country that didn't host this didn't host because of the same reason that you are now pulling out? Did you think, you know, and for athletics buffs, for sports people, they were like, oh, now that we bungled our chances of qualifying for uh, qualifying in the normal route for the relays and everything, bringing these events to Nigeria right. will also help us. Now, this is like just pulling. Uh, you know, the, the, the chair off, off you and you're, you find yourself on the ground. But as I accept that health and safety comes first. Mm -hmm. But Bola, I want you to see it from, from the angle of those people who are thinking like, like I just tried to imagine. Well, I think I understand that part as well because, like you rightly said, we all knew the reason Nigeria wanted to host initially was because the guys who hosted, okay, COVID issues, mm -hmm. let's talk. But remember a few months or a few weeks ago, we hosted making of champions um, Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And um, athletes from outside Nigeria came to participate. So what did those guys do right? 
to be able to host the event. As of now, we believe COVID is moving away. Why is it now that we are deciding to cancel? I won't be surprised if for whatever reason, maybe money is part of the reasons because as of the last report we got, they've never paid their due for the festival. So if it's money-related reasons, I understand. COVID, yes, but like you rightly said, we knew this was on before. Why did we accept? If we, excuse you, if we are having probably a spike in the rise of cases, we could say, okay, maybe this is why. This is not the case. There are protocols you could have gone through. Okay, if it's coming, you have to probably have gotten your vaccine, uh, bring COVID tests and everything before you are able to participate. Mm -hmm. But we just decided, okay, well, no. Again, it's bad news for some Nigerian athletes, especially those in Lagos that were really anticipating this. Okay, this could be another chance for me to go through the back door. Mm -hmm. But it looks like the back door is closed. If you can't get it through the front door, it's game over for them. I mean, uh, K Kingsley, what do we say? I mean, you went, all, all, went through all the hoops, went through all the loops, went through everything to ensure that, that you got this. And we must commend the sports ministry for being thoughtful. Mm -hmm. But here we are. All the effort is going to waste. Um, unfortunately, it has come to this, but um, um, the people making the decision, they should have um, given it a serious thought and, you know, take a look at uh, the pros and the cons. What will work for them um, when they eventually get to host? What won't work for them? They should have um, considered the, um, the time that we live in, considering the fact that um, the, the country that was supposed to host it pulled out because of this same reason, and then we picked it up without thinking about the same reason, and then later on, we now realize that this is the same reason why these people didn't want to host, and I thought you should also pull back. And, and you know, like, like Bolu stated, um, it goes along with to affect the athletes involved. You know, because for them, they, they, they thought that it could have been an avenue for them to qualify to the Olympics proper. But unfortunately, um, it, it is not that way as it stands right now. All right. So, uh, and of course, we all know about the letters circulating around, uh, signed uh, by uh, Assad Hassan, deputy head of uh, the technical secretariat, the uh, tax force on, 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 on COVID, uh, the presidential steering committee on COVID-19. Of course, commended the sports ministry, but also you, you have to put health and safety first. Yes, and um, we, we are not pointing fingers or, yeah. or laying blames, but uh, all of this, you get us excited. Mm -hmm. Then, the then in the know. next breath, you... <laughs> You know, it's, it's painful, but even though we understand the reasons, yeah. nobody can argue against uh, the reasons. So, all right, so that's how we have to start the show. We're going to take it off our chest. A lot of people are receiving it with mixed feelings, uh, you know, but it, it is what it is, and it has happened. Nigeria will not be hosting the uh, Athletics uh, Championship. We'll see uh, Algeria pulled out. Nigeria is next. We're going to see who's going to help uh, Africa, who's going to uh, be the one to allow that competition to uh, be held uh, in their domain. Guys, uh, we need to move on on the show quickly. As we move on, let's talk about the Tokyo Olympics uh, and just tell you, I said it earlier, it's 50 days to go. Let's show that to you. 50 days, you could say a month and a half, basically. That, that's, that's where we are now. And we're not having conversations around whether or not the Olympics will hold anymore because we know it's, it's going to be held. Let's just, uh, you know, so how to walk around all the issues is what uh, people are looking at. But what you have on your screen uh, showing the um, Olympic organizers uh, having an event to unveil uh, the costumes, uh, the medal trays, some of the things that will be used during the victory ceremonies as a countdown to uh, the games uh, continue. I mean, that's some of the things you have on screen, some of the things you're going to be seeing uh, later on. Uh, you know, if, if there's any country you can credit with innovation, it has to be Japan. And I'm very happy that in spite of all the challenges, these guys are dogged, they're facing this thing headlong, and they're well prepared. Well, um, I think they knew what they wanted from the onset. Remember the point when um, some persons even in Tokyo were like, we don't want this event. Now. They, um, I think they did like a survey, kind of, and uh, about 70% of them said they don't want it. But the local organizing committee and the IOC still kept on that. We will keep fighting hard for this. They made sure every possible thing that would be needed to avoid COVID, uh, the restrictions. They went as far as giving rules or guidelines against athletes. That if you break so-and-so rules, you'll be evicted. So they gave all these rules, and, and well, they felt we can still do this now, like Riley said. No one is thinking about 
Well, will it hold? Will it? No, no, no. It's about we will. It will hold. Then what can be done? What are the other things we are doing? Now they are even showing us the countdown. Initially they were just showing just the release. Mm -hmm. Everyone now that this is the countdown, countdown clock. We are ready down to the seconds. It means right. they are prepared now. Hopefully everyone gets prepared on their own, including Nigeria, and we we'll definitely have a beautiful look. All right, Kingsley, a quick one on that. Um, and the president of the games have pointed out that. that um, um, they're looking forward to hosting a safer games and mm -hmm. also um, what is giving their concern is how to control the um, flow of people you know, coming in, into the games and how to manage them you know, um, given um, 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 the rise of cases, uh, you know, COVID cases in Japan. But however, I think um, they have measures in place already you know, that are going to put all of these things in control, especially, most especially on how people you know, relate to themselves you know, um, coming from different countries. So I think um, they have it under control. Like they said, we should brace up to watching the Olympics without the spectators, without the fans. All right. That's it. Uh, I told you earlier that we had a special guest, someone you would love to uh, listen to. Uh, he's been on the show co a couple of times, but today he joins us again. He's currently the chairman of the caretaker committee of uh, the Rowing, Sailing, and Canoeing Federation. But of course, he's been at the helm um, for a very long time, and he's synonymous uh, to everything around sailing and canoeing and all of those events. And uh, uh, with a lot of pleasure, uh, I'm happy to have um, Admiral Professor Spopeni on the show again tonight. Greetings to you, sir. Thanks for joining us on the show. Good evening, my, my brother. How are you? I'm very fine. I'm very fine. Before we go into it, first, I must commend you for all your efforts to uh, ensure that uh, the, 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 the game, uh, the sport, uh, is taken to the next level. Its popularity has risen and a lot of good things are happening. And so I, I, must, I must commend you for all the hard work that you have put in over the years. Uh, so uh, let's just dive into uh, the discussion quickly as we can. I, I, I want to ask, I know that the information is out there, but for the sake of our viewers, uh, I want to quickly ask you, how many of our athletes will be going to Tokyo? Well, so far, I think we have, we have three confirmed. And the C1, we have uh, C1 canoeing sprint. We have Iomide, Bello, and then the rowing, uh, lightweight rowing, we have Esther Coco, and of course, in the uh, para, we have uh, um, we have, we have uh, Kingsley, 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 Ijoma. So we have those qual already qualified. Now then, Italy for the regatta. The regatta, we have, we have four uh, four people, two male, two female, para, and we are doing qualification for now. We don't know what they're going to come for us as of today. Okay. Uh, you know, in times past, you have said, many times I've heard you say it, that uh, the sport that you're in charge of can win us many medals. Uh, but ahead of Tokyo Olympics, um, I mean, what, what, what's, what's on your mind? What, what's, what's the target? What do you think these athletes can bring home? My brother, honestly, I have told my coach, who I say is, is a mint of gold or bronze or silver. I was sure of medal. The, the, the call, I'm not, I can't say it now, but we're sure of medal at this Olympics. That, that, that's good to hear uh, in a sport that uh, a lot of people are still trying to, to, to warm up to. Uh, I, 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 love, I, I love what I hear uh, from, from you. And I, I want to quickly ask, talking about the Olympics, all of the things you've been hearing about Japan and all of these issues, is it a distraction to your federation or everybody has been going about their normal duties irrespective of all of the news we're hearing from Japan? As far as we are concerned, we are going, for Tokyo, we are going to Tokyo. And uh, as of today, we have our athletes in Jabi Lake, Abuja, training. If I spoke to the coach today and see they are, they are, win, they are win, getting to better timing than before. So I'm happy about that. We are going to Tokyo. Tokyo. We're not, we're not part about whatever is being discussed now by people, this distraction, like you said, they're just mere distraction and we are ready to go. And of course, in, in the ones now qualified in Italy, I hope you give the professor have more athletes qualifying. Okay, um, that, that, that's, that's good to hear, uh, especially when you talk about being confident of uh, uh, medals, even though you don't know the color. Not many federations uh, can, can say that. Let, let's digress a little. We'll, we'll come back to Tokyo, but, let, but let's digress uh, a little. I want you to quickly help us 
um, dispel a notion or confirm the validity of that notion, uh, which is that, look, these things about canoeing and uh, rowing is, is elitist and is for leisure. It's, it's not really a sport. A lot of people say that. What do you say when you hear that? Uh, there's just, it's leisure, it's not a sport, and, and it's also elitist. Well, first, it's not elitist. It's a sport that can be done by anybody. Because once you have a canoe and a paddle, you can paddle. It's not elitist. And, uh, some sports seem to be like elitist, but they are, they are not. Any sports become leisure before it becomes a sport. First, when, when you go for a sport, you want to have leisure out, out of it. Out of leisure, you're not going into competitiveness. So therefore, it's not a, a elitist, not a, a, a competitive, uh, it's not elitist sport that we're thinking about. But yes, you must have a canoe, have a paddle, you have water to do this, you must know how to swim to get this sport on. Uh, but in, uh, in nations, like you uh, have in, in, in the UK, you have the uh, university sports, that's uh, Oxford, uh, Cambridge, they rule, but not that they are elite, but there's schools that can afford it. Okay. All right. Um, let me ask you this before we let you go. Yes. This these equipments, how, uh, how accessible are they for someone? Because that's another hurdle for somebody that loves the sport. That's another hurdle to cross, to get a paddle, to get a cano, uh, to get uh, the what, to, to get the, you know, you know the, the, where you, you are. I know you have, I think, some a place in Lekki where people go and uh, they train and all that. But how do you cross all of those hurdles? How are those things accessible to anybody who loves the sport here in Nigeria? You know, honestly, you're very right. When I joined the, sport, the, the federation, we had no boats, nothing. Meanwhile, the international body had donated boats for 11 boats and were in a school port for so many years. <laughs> so many years. We couldn't clear them, but nobody bothered about them. You know, they are, they are not attractive items, like where they were, people were still them. So we on the port for 11 years. And uh, when I went to for uh, boats. Just imagine people playing football without uh, a pitch, without a ball, but only a chair on the board. So I now asked my uh, my federation secretary, you must get these boats wherever they are. Luckily, they found me Kurudu in a container, and I made sure I clear them and put them back to, to use. Then we had the first medal in, in rowing, canoeing in the African Games. One lady and go, go eat. And uh, it was Jaffa, Jaffa, But well, then we got the first medal after capsizing and go. But all the same, we started going. And, and I found we need, we need to buy boats. We now manufacture boats from South Africa. Musha okay. Benef, Musha Benef insurance made for and From there, we started going. Now we right. now we don't manuf manufacture boats in the lake itself. Okay. All right. Uh, so I want to thank you for taking our time to be with us on the show. Time not always our friend. Hopefully we, we have this conversation uh, again before you go uh, for the Olympics and uh, all the best to the team. Hopefully they'll get the medals as you have uh, said. All right. So uh, that's uh, the, uh, currently the uh, chairman of the caretaker committee of the Rowing, uh, Canoeing and Sailing Federation of Nigeria, Admiral Professors uh, Pubeni. When we come back, there's a lot to talk about uh, in the world of sports, but that will be after this break. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're back, and of course, we'll move on from where we left off. We'll I'll talk about the French Open much later. Uh, of course, uh, Roger, I mean, Rafael Nadal is currently. Um, slugging it out with Richard Gasquet. Uh, some of my partners say that uh, he's been whipping him like a boy. So we'll talk about that towards the end of the show. And uh, let's just move on, guys. Um, let's talk about the international friendly Super Eagles of Nigeria and the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon. I don't know if I had bored you during uh, that break with the stories that I have to say about Cameroon. I don't have fond memories of Cameroon. I don't know about you guys. Forgive me if I'm sounding partisan. I know I'm not supposed to, but sometimes I'm a Nigerian, and I remember two moments in my life I can't forget. 1988, as a little boy, my father's sitting room, these guys defeated us. I go got chopped off, they won. In Lagos, year 2000, scored 
I mean, took the trophy right in our eyes. So anytime I see Cameroon, I forgo I'm forgiving Ghana, but Cameroon, <laughs> Cameroon, I don't know. So that match details on your screen. Nigeria and Cameroon. It's going to be tomorrow, Friday, June 4. Uh, of course, it's going to be, the game is going to be in Austria. 8.30 p.m. Nigerian time is when the game will start. It's a friendly, but guys, it's against Cameroon. Let me start with Kingsley. Your thoughts. What, what do you expect to see? Uh, one or two withdrawals, but we still have 21 players in camp. Should be enough for the double header. I mean, um, it's a friendly. It's a time to um, try out new players, just like um, we have on the list. You could mm -hmm. see um, lots of new faces coming in as a result of um, the familiar ones pulling out. Mm -hmm. And we honestly hope that um, the coach um, you know, will get to, um, to give them the opportunity to play. Yeah, to play. Of course, so that um, everybody could see what they can do and in the event where the regular ones are not around. Mm -hmm. We we'll always know who to call up. But let's not forget, again, it's Cameroon. Familiar fools, any day, any time. Mm -hmm. And... You know, like you mentioned earlier, <laughs> when, when you remember um, the encounters we've had against them, mm -hmm. it's really not been a good one, especially when it comes to um, tournament proper, talking about the Nations Cup now. I mean, how we've lost um, the title. At uh, crucial to them, moment. At crucial moment, exactly. Especially the one right under our noses here oh, in the National Stadium. Lagos. Here in Lagos. But, however, um, uh, since after that time, after 20, uh, 2000, um, the Super Eagles have um, you know, had, had it good with them. I think I've only drawn one game in the last five against Cameroon. So, pretty good record. Under Coach Gennadro, you know, he, he has had a fantastic record against us. So we really hope the record will continue tomorrow, okay. considering um, the array of players that we have. All right. Um, okay, uh, Amos Joseph also joins us now, a friend of the house, joins us uh, all the way from the United Kingdom. Uh, great to see you, Amos. Thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, I know you all smiles. You heard me <laughs> la lament about Karen. I don't know if you feel that way, but what do you expect to see tomorrow? <laughs> I mean, for me, I'm excited. Uh, good evening, everybody in the studio. Uh, so the reality is I'm excited that we're playing Cameroon again. Uh, and I'm happy that some new boys are in camp. And there's good vibes coming uh, from the camp right now at the moment. Uh, the guys are all happy. They're all cheers. The new boys, uh, the old boys. You know, we want to see a mix of what's going to roll us to do with these boys. Not just inviting them, you know. Not just calling them to come just because you want to invite them to come but for with cameroon we can't we can't forget 2000 will, will be like the freshest of them all um when they did us very a very strong thing as people will say in quote you know nobody can forget national stadium right on our home soil they they spoiled the party for us remember ulisse crying remember the players crying you know it was <laughs> it was a moment uh, you don't want, it's, it's one of those moments you don't want to remember when it comes to football. And if you remind some of those players who were part of it, they will tell you that this is one time, one moment that they don't want to ever remember again because it was a very crucial moment. And like one of the guests rightly said, you know, we have to win at crucial times. But with this friendly, let us see uh, the new players that you have invited. Let's see what they can do. We've seen some of the players uh, at their clubs but we want to see if they are truly meant for the Super Eagles. Not everybody is meant for the Super Eagles, but with this crop of players, and I'm glad that uh, uh, some, of, some of the players like uh, Moses Simon are also back. You know, um, he couldn't play, I think it was a, the, one of the Lesotho games uh, because they couldn't come back to Nigeria from France and all. Uh, we are happy to have all of these boys back. We'll just see, wait and see what can be done. Okay. Uh, we just want to enjoy good football, actually. Let's right. see what this fight can produce, yeah. Good football plus a win. All right, Balu, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to get your own thoughts. And I, I could see that a lot of people are saying that, look, if, you inv if somebody merits an invitation, let's say the person. To me, for instance, and I've said it a couple of, couple of times, it appears like the coach has made up his mind on some certain position. For instance, I know who is the number one goalkeeper. <laughs> but if you invite other goalkeepers, for goodness sake, let, let us see them. If you invite players, let us see them. That's the reason why they are invited. Although I admit that I don't want us to lose against Cameroon. Mm -hmm. But yet, you invite those players, let us see them. The final decision it still rests with the coach. But invite someone, we have to see them. Well, um, maybe if we played uh, four games, two friendlies and two qualifiers, and uh, we had five goalkeepers, including Tobias, who they say claim to acclimatize. And only one goalkeeper played. That's and the there was not the first choice. Nothing is up. I think I can sit down here and easily say, if I call Gennaro's first eleven for the game tomorrow, maybe seven, eight, nine of them will start out. That'd be uh, right. Having Okoye, Trustekon Gawazim, Jamlu Collins, um, Shiwa Abdullah, Ndidiye, Tebo and Iwobi. They're not front. Ian Acho, Ahmed Musa, and Onachi. That could be his starting eleven because we know Gennaro. But um, Joseph talked about, let's see, boys. 
And again, initially they named 31 players, mm -hmm. later cut it down to 26. Mm -hmm. And then Ross started lamenting about six of them who put out due to one or two reasons. One of the things they tell you in football is nobody prays for injury or anything, but immediately one man Spot goes down, the there's always an opportunity for another. When people keep saying quota for MPFA, I say I don't want quota. What I want is a level playing field for everybody. You just have to be good enough. Now, if uh, some players pulled out and we had to go as far as Slovakia to bring a defender, that probably, I'm not sure, about 90% of journalists don't even know anything about him before now. Okay, yes, good, you went to scout that far. Then why don't you come in and look out for one or two players to make the numbers if you invited 26, means for whatever reason you needed 26. Now they have 21 alone in camp. That's left to him. It's always good to win every game. But at the same time, don't give these guys two minutes because you invite them. One of our best players in Africa is um, Junior Ajayi. Mm -hmm. I think he has one best player in Egypt once or twice. But the only time he played on that role was like five or ten minutes. It shouldn't be you have to go abroad to play before you get the chance. Valentino Zoha 4 was called maybe just once. And it was a backup player as at then. He didn't play. I'm not even sure he won nothing in any game. But now he's gone abroad and he plays. Let's, we want to win, yes. It's always good to win. But if you play well in a friendly game due to making some trials. And interestingly, we are playing Cameroon twice. Mm -hmm. So you can play maybe different starting lineup in both games. Sure. Let's, if we enjoy the game and lose... You know you have something. Mm -hmm. At least if, uh, for example, if Bolu is saying, you must play John, you must play John. If we all see John, and John does well, I can easily tell you this is what I've been saying. And if John should mess up, I can tell you, well, we can if see. He doesn't Maybe get there's an another invite next yeah. time. So I, I think justify it's, it. it's good to win every game, but at the same time, is let's try this guy. We all know if everybody is fit, Osima is our number one striker. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong in a friendly match. Try maybe, let's see how you Wala. We've seen maybe five, ten minutes of this guy. Let's see what happens when he starts a game. Yeah. What can he bring to the table? We all know Lion Cup. We saw him in the Europa League. This time around, we want to see if he's good enough to play for the Super League. So, he's left to get a raw. He, he gets paid for it, even though he's been old. But that's his job. Let's see. But make a few changes. Even if you decide to start your best players in the first half, there's nothing wrong in giving those guys 30 minutes, not 10 minutes to the end of the game. And I, I, I don't agree with... You know, inviting players and not, and not, and not using them, uh, I, I don't think it's right. We could go on and on and on, especially when it's the Super Bowl, because a lot of us are passionate, but we have a lot of ground to cover. That's the list. 21 players in camp. Maduka Okoye, Francis Uzor, John Noble. Those are the goalkeepers in camp. Uh, let's go uh, and move on to the other ones. William Trus, Ekong, you have Chidozi Awazi and Jamilo Collins, Valentine Ozoan for... Anthony Izushiko, uh, the defenders, you midfield, Alex Iwobi, Wilfred Ndidi, Shewa Abdullahi, Ogunaka Retebo, Abraham, Marcus, Samson, Sijani. Those are the midfielders in that squad. Forwards, Kelechi Yanacho, Anoye Wala, Terran Murphy, yeah, Peter Olainka, Hakmed Musa, and uh, Paul Onuachu uh, making uh, 21 players in camp for the Super Eagles. 8 30 p.m. Nigerian time tomorrow is when the game will be played. Of course, we'll be here to, uh, to talk you through uh, the game. will be your eyes and ears in case you're not able to watch the game. Let's move on now and talk about what's going to happen in about a week, a little over a week. Talk about the European Championship. And we, we started uh, something on this program. We're profiling the teams. Today is the turn of uh, Group C. Group C. Let's take a look at the countries in Group C. And I'm, I'll allow uh, the guys around me to say a couple of things, uh, but we have to make it fast because of time. Austria, Netherlands, not Macedonia, uh, very famous for defeating Germany. Uh, <laughs> one of their players is 36, Goran Pandev. Uh, I mean, I didn't even know he's still playing football. Uh, <laughs> then Ukraine as well. If we go by FIFA ranking, the best team in this group is the Netherlands, the 16th, followed by Austria, 23. North Macedonia is 62. Ukraine is 24. FIFA rankings don't play football. Stats don't play football. The only country that has won the European Championship of these teams is the Netherlands, 1988. That very wonderful squad, 1988. Now, let me start with Bolu. I know... I know that only God knows what's going to happen um, in the future. But you look at this group, which two teams you think uh, will pull, pull through? Do you think we're going to have upsets? Well, easily everyone will say Netherlands. But um, the past years, they've struggled. They even qualified uh, from their group in qualifiers as second, not first, despite being the best team in mm -hmm. quote on paper. And um, you look like a team like North Macedonia. They qualify 
thanks to the UEFA Nations League. Mm -hmm. They went through uh, Part C and whatever, and they got here. So sometimes we see shockers in the past in the Euros, especially Iceland in the last edition. Mm -hmm. Netherlands, except something is wrong, Netherlands should qualify. And uh, for Austria, Ukraine, Austria, Ukraine, for whatever reason, I think I'll go. It shouldn't for matter if Van Dijk is not there. Well, if Van Dijk is not even there, so, it shouldn't so, matter. It shouldn't matter. But again, we saw what happened to the same Netherlands since he got injured, and we saw what happened to Liverpool. It shows its importance for both clubs. But you should expect Netherlands to go through from this group, and maybe. Maybe Ukraine. Maybe oh okay. Maybe Ukraine. All right, Kingsley. Um, dark horses, Austria. I mean, they um they are very dogged. You know, mm -hmm. very very strong team. Nobody really gives them a chance going into any competition. Mm -hmm. We saw them in the last European Championship. Mm -hmm. You know how they came out smoking. Um, the David Alaba, probably the most um, recognizable player in the whole of Austria. Though, um, given where he's coming from, Bayern Munich, presently now in Real Madrid. But however. Um, I think um, Ukraine have something off their sleeve. We shouldn't just write them off because um, if you look at their trajectory since um, Andrei Chechenko took over the team, they've been playing some scintillating football. They have some exciting players. Yeah. The young man from Manchester City, Yao Malenko, you know, and the rest of them. You know, Andrei Chechenko have been able to do a tremendous job with that team. You know, they'll be difficult to break down. And then on North Macedonia, yeah, um, giant killers, you must say, I mean, following by that um, defeat to Germany, that um, German, the Germans suffered from their hands. But however, I don't think um, they are going to pull any surprise in this group. And also, um, of course, um, the most flamboyant team there, the Dutch side, you know, always having something, you know, to bring to the table, to bring to the fore. They have exciting players. They have a fantastic system, you know, but um, everybody tends to want to, um, you know, emulate them when, whenever they, you know, take to the field of play. But however, I think um, the absence of Van Dijk, yeah, in as much as um, it, it could be a blow to them, but I think um, they have enough um, personnel in that department. If you look at and delete, you look at and the other one from um, Inter Milan and the bride from Inter Milan. I think um, they have just about enough cover, you know, to cover for um, the absence of Virgil van Dijk. I think um, the Dutch will come out and um, just maybe, yeah, I'll lean them towards um, Ukraine because of um, the work that uh, Andrei Chechenko has done with the team leading okay. this far. All right, all right. Two of my guys have said Holland and Ukraine. Let me see. Uh, Amos, uh, you, you've, of course, you've been listening in and you, you, you have your thoughts as well. So, you look at Group C, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, um, I, I took a look at the uh, Austrian team and then what I have found out is that about 73% of their squad members play their football in Germany. Uh, the rest, like, like that's about 20, 20 players out of about 26 players play in Germany and then the remaining ones are playing in China, all England and then back home in Austria. Either they are playing for LASK or they are playing for uh, Salzburg, RB Salzburg. Um, so, I mean, their coach himself has agreed or he has admitted that um, Netherlands are going to be a tough nut for them to crack. Uh, everybody would agree that it's going to be a very tough one for them. Uh, going by um, the rankings or saying all things being equal, you expect uh, Netherlands to topple everybody on the group. Uh, you don't expect sh anything short of uh, topping the group from Netherlands. Um, you know, look at some of the uh, some of the most um, popular players among them, Marco Anatovic, and then you also want to talk about David Alaba. You know, you, you ask yourself, what threats does this team want to pose to the likes of Ukraine? With what football, with the kind of football Ukraine are playing right now at the moment, they are really doing something good uh, with their with their coach Andrei Shevchenko and the likes of Yamalenko. What they are pulling off, you expect uh, both Ukraine and Netherlands actually. Uh, and then for North Macedonia, I, I really can't say because you, they, I don't see them pulling off any offset. In this game, the game against Germany, um, I mean, these things happen once in a while, but you don't want to bank on that going into a tournament uh, such as the Euros, actually. Okay, uh, we'll see what happens, whether it was a one-off, whether or not they are really giant killers. Uh, we, we'll see what happens. Interesting times ahead, talking about Euros. Let's go to the FIFA World Cup qualifiers now and talk about what's happening in the common ball region and give to you some of the matches that will be played. Uh, let's see. I'm going to come up on your screen. Argentina and Chile. Uh, that's going to be 1 a.m. Nigerian time. And uh, Uruguay and Paraguay. Uh, that's going to be by 11. And uh, Peru, Colombia. It's 3 a.m. in the morning. 
and um, Bolivia Venezuela. That game should probably have started. Um, probably should have started uh, by now. But if you ask anybody who's been following football for a while, this is always the toughest uh, confederation, toughest qualifying, the toughest zone to qualify from. And you see surprising results ahead of uh, USA 94, Bolivia 2, Argentina 2 to the high altitude. And it was, it was a massacre. <laughs> you know, so, but guys, I, I'm going to get your thoughts uh, quickly on what you have on screen. Let me, let me start with Bull. Quick one on this um, fixtures. Well, the game everyone would definitely want to follow or think about is the Argentina versus Chile game. Um, they are one of the biggest. Like Riley said, this. South America is not like every other place. You play each other. Yes. There's nothing like that. Uh, the, the best team, a nah. uh, group of death. No, they nah. are all dead. You play dead each in other. that group. Everyone is playing. All the 10 teams. That means you are playing 18 games mm -hmm. to qualify for the World Cup. And it, it shows how tough a competitive could be. And like Gerardo said, Bolivia, oh, you think, let's go to the high altitude and see what you can do. And Argentina have a very healthy record against Chile. They have a very record against everybody except Brazil. Mm -hmm. But it feels like when Messi is not there, they struggle a bit and this and that. But Messi is back. You can't bet against any team that has Messi. Even if you are certain you'd win. When Messi sparks to light, you know you're in trouble. But that's a game everyone wants to think about. Yeah, maybe Uruguay, Paraguay as well. Uruguay because of, uh, well, Messi's, should I say, former friend of friend, the likes of um, Edison Cavani, the likes of Luis Suarez. Suarez. It should be another interesting game. But because both teams, that's Argentina and Uruguay at home, you'd always expect them to win. And one match also look out for that Uruguayan team is the younger Fede Valverde. Since he's played his debut for the team, he's been a regular. And we see what he does for Real Madrid. He never gets tired. Running from defense to attack, 2 4 seven. So I think those are the two games I would love to follow and monitor what happens after 90 minutes. All right. Kingsley? Um, Bolivia, Venezuela. I mean, um, <clears throat> anything that goes to Quito, you know, <laughs> it doesn't live to tell the tale <laughs> afterwards. I'm um, high altitude. You know, they seem to know their terrain very well mm -hmm. and they make that terrain. Use it to their advantage. Use it to their advantage. No team ever goes there and survives. Like you mentioned, the massacre of Argentina, you know, proud to qualify for US 94. But however, um, I think um, another tough game to watch out there for definitely should be Argentina, Chile. I mean, two sides that know themselves very well. Mm -hmm. um, Copa America finalists back to back, you know, with Chile, you know, uh, doing votes over Argentina. So Argentina will really be looking out for this one, you know, trying to see how they can put um, the memory of that Copa America behind them, you know, trying to see how they can qualify, you know, going into the World Cup. Also, let's not forget uh, Uruguay, Paraguay. Uruguay have a core of their team together. Like Abolo mentioned, Freddy Valverde, you know, is, is um, a core member of the team. And also the man from, from Arsenal who's on loan to Atletico, you know, another key member of the team. So they, 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 they have a, a very compact team, a very compact squad. And of course, with Luis Suarez up front and Cavani, you, you cannot write them off. Um, I, I, I feel so sorry for Paraguay because um, you can't really look at anybody on their side and pinpoint to say, okay, this is the man that could likely, you know, want to pose a threat to um, the Uruguayan side. So I think um, it's Uruguay and Argentina for this one, you know, in that group. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, I don't know. I think we have a few seconds before we go on break. Let me see if I can uh, allow Amos. Um, if, if you. Okay. Amos will say one of the things. When we return from this break, Amos, just hold your thoughts. We, we go on a break. We'll come back for more on sports tonight.
Georges Salamat Uni. Trois Mandjaou, 6-0, 2-6, 6-4, 6-3. Qualification pour. Welcome back. We're on the home stretch. Uh, I still have Amos with me. Well, Amos, um, a lot has been said about, you know, that World Cup qualifier. So don't let me bore you with that because we're pressed for time. In a minute, I have, I have a question for you. Ronald Koeman has been told that he's going to continue as Barcelona coach with one of some, some conditions. But I want to ask you, and I hope you'll be able to give me an answer in less than a minute before we let you go. Are you surprised that he's left on the job? And those conditions, do you think... It's a booby trap. Um, I mean, he's a coach. That's what he's uh, subscribed for. Um, no, nobody, except for core Barcelona fans, uh, they would be surprised to see him on the job. Uh, for me, I'm not surprised because when the news didn't come out on time, they, they're like, oh, they're, going to still, they're still going to have a meeting uh, before they decide on his future. I knew something was going to happen. I, I felt like something is going to, is going to be uh, fishy. You know, they just want him to get to a point. You know, he, he's had times with the club and I, I feel like they just don't want to destroy or disgrace him. But let's just see what can come up in the future with, 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 with him coaching Barcelona. And my fear, not, is not, my fear is not for Coleman not succeeding on the job. My fear is for the stars such as Messi, if they are still going to be able to, uh, if they are still going to be remain happy uh, having Coleman as their coach. You know, um, things seem... A bit shaky uh, at, at the beginning and then somehow it began to steady but they are still not at that level where you expect them to be as the barcelona that everybody is, okay. is used to but right. for una coman we, we can only wish him the best actually okay we can all right Amos joseph i want to thank you for your time on the show today hopefully we get to do this some other time thank you so much for having me Yemi. all right all right so that's our friend amos all right uh, as we begin to wind up let me quickly ask you, Kingsley, Simone Izagi to Inter, do you think that was the man they wanted or he was just a stopgap? You know, I, I saw some jokes on Twitter, uh, uh, the owner of the club saying, I, want, I wanted Simeone, not Simone. Why did you get me Simone? <laughs> but, you know, I guess it's all for laughs. But, but it's making me ask you, do you think that was the man they wanted or, well, it didn't work with the other guy. Let's, let's get this one. Um, I, I think um, um, the hierarchies at Inter Milan, you know, um, must have had their preference, but I, I don't think um, Simone Inzaghi was their first choice because um, uh, this is somebody that has been um, with Lazio both as a player and then assumed that position as a coach. You know, hasn't really taken um, Lazio to that pinnacle. Mm -hmm. You know, where they would have thought you know that um, Inzaghi um, would have taken them to. But however, I think um, Inzaghi is just a stopgap for them. You know, in order for them to try to sort out that manager that befits you know the kind of project right. you know that they have going in Inter Milan. Okay, all right, a good one. Bull, before we let you go, update from the French Open. Uh, is the whipping continuing? 
Well, two sets down. Third set, she is already leaving, uh, leading one love already. First set, uh, six love. Second set, seven five. Now, third set, one love. I think it's a, it's a done deal for now. Now that I don't lead two sets in, on the clay courts, and you expect to come back. So the, the, the home crowd not able to push nah. Gasky? I think it's not so good for the home team. Remember, <laughs> uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Gail Monfils also Gail Monfils, home, yeah. at home. Well, uh, no matter who gets there, I think it's still another off show. It's still going to be another off show. All right. Okay, guys, I want to thank you for your time on the show today. This is fun. Really, it was fun yeah. doing this. Yeah. And hopefully we'll do this again some other time. Yeah, sure. Oh, definitely. All right. Thank you as well for allowing us to be a part of your day. It's a privilege we'll never take for granted. We'll back here again tomorrow. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye now.